Uh, hey, uh, this is uh, me. I'm Matt, and I play uh, I play bass in Motherfeather. And uh, so I'm going to talk to you today about my my setup here, uh, bass and pedals for the Vans Warped Tour 2016. They give us a backline for our stage, so we play through basically like variety of orange amps which are great not normally what I would use but they do the trick it's awesome uh, my base is my trusty uh, 1976 Fender Precision all original except for the pick guard which uh, was originally white and I think this knob is not original everything else is uh, the real deal so as far as the tone and volume, I have them all the way up at all times. The tone is all the way up. Unless I was doing, definitely for this gig, uh, for this, for Mother Feather, I'm playing with a pick 99% of the time. And it's like, it's one guitar, Chris on guitar, me on bass. So it's like the two of us are filling up the sound. I use a lot of effects pedals and stuff. So it needs to be a more pointed sound. If I'm doing like a singer-songwriter gig kind of thing, then then I will adjust the tone volume accordingly and play more with my fingers or with my, my thumb to get, you know, more of a Rick Danko kind of thing, you know, or whatever. Um, but for this band, it's just rock, forward, pointed, always. <laughs> uh, and the pickups on this guy, these, Actually, I think I think they're original. The pickups just eventually they'll come unwound. And there's this guy, Lindy Fraylin, who I've never met. I've spoken to him on the phone once. It was recommended to Chris. And I have a pickup of his in my guitar. Yeah, right here. There you go. So the like the copper wire just comes unravel. Um, so I had to send it to him, and he's like, I think, oh, I don't know, he has like some new old stock of this copper wire that was used in the 60s and 70s, and so he can actually make you a pickup that sounds like it was made in 1976. So he recoiled these pickups for me to get them back up to spec. I use like the classic Rotosound Route 66 strings. And I have not changed this set of strings in close to six years. So these are, I have another set in the gig bag, just in case, but uh, yeah, I'm one of those guys. It's the sound, ultimately, uh, that's just kind of a more classic sound, I guess, in the way, for the way I play, that's like a little more down the middle, I guess, uh, in terms of note selection or like there's not a lot of I'm like an eighth note you know on the record kind of guy for the most part so for this gig for the warp tour I did some different things than I had done before because I wasn't really sure what the amp situation was going to be normally I would play through uh, I have an old Ampeg V4 that has like a really warm you know, the, the, that evasive, warm, creamy, but still clear distortion to it. Um, anyway, so for this tour, I, uh, I introduced the Sans amp into my chain, that's the N, uh, but I guess just to kind of go through it, I go first into the octave multiplexer, which is the coolest, well, not necessarily the coolest, but I think uh, a really great octave pedal for bass. It's mono, um, and it just kind of has like a, just a cool, really great sub harmonic tone to it. But you can still actually hear the notes even though they're super low, um, which is cool. And because it's electro harmonics, of which most of my pedals are, it's true bypass. So the blend on it, like I'm always getting the real bass sound through it, uh, which is great. So I go through that. And then I have this pitchfork that I only use on one song when I kind of am emulating this sort of organ -y keyboard pad stuff uh, for the, this one sort of ballad tune of ours called uh, Constellation Baby. 
So that just kind of gets me into some more atmospheric stuff. And this is a great pedal for that. Uh, it can do, uh, it can take you through the scale as well. So you could do like harmony kind of parts with yourself if you want to do. At this point, I just use the octave up. Um, and then I have this new Memory Man Deluxe, which is awesome. It's a pretty close approximation to the old school large chassis Memory Man that I would, would normally use. But this is a pretty brutal tour in terms of like being out in the elements every day um, and having to move your stuff around really fast. Um, so I just sort of bit the bullet and bought this um, Memory Man and this pitch pedal to not to replace, but in lieu of bringing out my old Memory Man and my old uh, Pog, which is the more traditional octave. Memory serves. I'm going octave pedal, the pitchfork, and then actually into the bass big muff, which I actually had a friend slightly modify so that it's always in the position of normal, which means that there's dry signal coming through um, as well as the fuzz. So I can I can adjust that. And I'm always getting like clear P bass low end. Uh, transparently through it and then I'm just adding the fuzz to that um, so that's cool and then I go into the memory boy which I kind of normally the settings for this would be kind of like this so the feedback is actually all the way up uh, and then it's down on like the chorus and I don't, I don't even remember what that <laughs> that setting is anyway this is basically my freak out it's kind of like, it's on infinite feedback. And when I kick this on, it's just like, because this kind of gives you like chaos for a second. So I can hit that and then that goes into the memory man and that gets delayed. So I can do any number of things with it. I can just like, if there's kind of like a break in a song, I can click that and just, just chaos it happens for a second. Um, and then we all come back in or I can, if you know somebody breaks a string or like Anne or the singer is, has some technical thing or something happens in the snare drum, I can, you know, Chris and I can make atmospheric sounds. And this is a cool thing for me that I can do that. So then it goes into the Memory Man, which sounds awesome, and I could get that sort of classic Pink Floyd uh, kind of dotted eighth note delay thing happening. Um, and all that goes into the Sans Amp, which just has a little bit of drive to it. Um, and that's just blended in. It kind of just makes it sound closer to an Ampeg, <laughs> which is, for me anyway, the way I play bass in this band, I just want to be playing through my V4 or through an SVT or something. Um, and then lastly, I go into this uh, loop pedal that I'm actually, on this gig, just for convenience of setting up really quick on Warp Tour, I'm playing through this pedal all the time, uh, but I have two or three loops stored for a couple songs in our set that are just like these synth patches, one of which is, is in time, so I can do a tap tempo so we don't have to play to a click track. We just play, and, and then as the, as the tune is starting, I just tap it. And if I feel like it's getting off at any point in the song, I can just tap it and it's a awesome pedal just correct it. Uh, and that just goes into the amp and yeah, that's that. Hey, this is Matt and Chris. Thanks for checking out our gear on Gear Masters. Uh, you can find out more about the band at motherfeather.com. <laughs> and we're out all summer on the band's warp tour. See you. Awesome.